One thing that annoys me quite a bit, even though granted it does give me material for videos like this, is the way in fantasy and medieval films, in the scene where they forge the sword, you see it done like this. Yes, it's the casting of the sword in the open-topped mould, and you can see the bright orange liquid there going in and slowly, slowly creeping along the mould as the music plays, and it all looks so dramatic and fiery, and it is completely wrong. I mean, it's so wrong, it's frankly difficult to know where to start, but I shall give it a go. So, where shall I start? The stone mould. The stone mould is open-topped. How's that going to work? How can you cast a 3D item in an open-topped mould? Yes, you'll get the, the lower half of the sword, so what are you going to do? Cast two of them and then sort of glue them back to back to make a sword? Or are you just going to fill it up to the top and so one side of the sword looks like a, you know, a, a sword shape and the other side is just a big flat slab that you have to grind down into shape? Well, they didn't grind swords down into shape. They had no big grinding machines and it would be fantastically waste, wasteful of good metal. and. Um, if you're going to forge the sword from that point, then why have you cast the sword in the first place? Surely the whole point of casting a sword is you get the shape of the sword you want in the mould. Now, they did cast swords in bronze, yes, but not in open-top moulds. And that worked. But in these movies, you're not being shown a bronze sword, you're being shown an iron sword. Or, as I know someone out there is going to say, I think he means steel sword. <sighs> I'm going to say iron sword. Do you know what steel is made out of? Iron. They don't cast swords in iron in open-topped moulds. Uh, for one thing, it would come out the wrong shape, and another thing is that a big slab of stone here, and it's always a dramatic big slab of stone, isn't it, would be terrible for a mould, because stone has a very high specific heat capacity. If you're in uh, Greece in summer, you can still you can put your hand on a big marble column and immediately it feels icy because the stone is very good at absorbing and conducting heat away from you so your hand feels cold when you touch it. So if you pour very slowly, oh and why do they always pour, pour into the mould so slowly? Oh because it's dramatic isn't it seeing the mould fill up slowly but actually you want you want to get the metal in quickly, you want it flowing into the mould and filling into every little crevice of the mould and then um, settling in and all air bubbles whatever coming out of it long before it solidifies. You don't want to hang about but if you pour metal slowly into this mould, which is going to suck heat out of that metal really quickly, then as it goes into the mould it's going to be cooling down and getting more viscous and then the next bit of, of uh, flowing metal has to then go over the top of that lumpy bit and then that starts to cool down and form more lumps and then maybe the next bit's just going to pour sideways over the top of the mould and you'll get a terrible casting. No, pour it in quickly. But also, what are you pouring into that mould? Because that's not iron or steel. That is probably aluminium. Now, why do I say that? Well, because it's glowing orange. Now, filmmakers like orange because it's a dramatic colour, isn't it? It's the colour of fire and, and, and stuff. But if you heat iron hot enough to pour into a mould, it isn't orange. It's bright white. So, as soon as you see that, you know that that is not iron. But you could say, well, maybe it's cooled down a bit. Yeah, but the melting point of iron is 1538 degrees centigrade. So it won't be glowing orange because things that glow, glow a colour according to their temperature. It's absolutely irrespective of what material they're made out of. If you look in the inside of a furnace and you see the, the bricks there and you see the, the, the coke, the fuel that's burning away and you see the, uh, the, the stuff that's being smelted, it's all the same shade of orange at the same time because it's all the same temperature. It doesn't matter what something's made out of. If it's glowing that shade of orange, it's about 950 degrees centigrade. So that's considerably lower than the melting point of iron, and you have to go quite a bit past the melting point of iron uh, to actually have a, get a good cast out of it, because otherwise, as soon as it hit the mould, it would start to cool down and then solidify. That's no good. You've got to get quite a bit past the melting point of iron to make cast iron. So that is not iron. By and large, they use aluminium. Aluminium melts at about 660 degrees centigrade, and so that's usually what they use. By the way, uh, if ever you see in a film people casting silver and the metal they use looks silvery, it isn't silver. Because silver, when it's really hot, reacts quite uh, quickly with the atmosphere and forms a sort of a blackish soot on its, uh, on its outside. It sort of oxidizes. Um, it's only when it's cooled and you've buffed it up that it looks silvery. Whereas molten lead or tin or bismuth or antimony, those ingredients to white metal, 
they look quite silvery. So by and large, if you'll see someone in a movie casting some metal that looks silvery, it's not silver. So the mold is wrong, the metal is wrong, but also the whole concept of casting an iron sword is wrong. Cast iron is brittle. Now it has very good compressive strength. You, you can um, make an iron pillar out of it and, and it'll, it'll hold up a roof really well. But if you made a sword out of iron, a long thin bar, and you intended to hit hard things hard with it, it would just shatter. It's like glass. They did not cast iron swords. So um, in summary then, no, no, and What's the other thing? Oh yeah, no. The Demon!